This is one of the most beautiful calculus problems. We have a square of unknown side length inside, which a triangle is drawn such that its base lies along the bottom side of the square, and the other two sides go up to meet at a point somewhere on the top side of the square. The top angle of the triangle is marked as theta. See, if I move this triangle vertex at this point, this gives some value of theta. And then if I move it here, then it might give some other value of theta which means on moving the top vertex along the upper edge of the square, the value of theta keeps changing. Without giving any other information, we are asked to find the minimum and maximum values theta can take. So, can you solve it? We know that whenever we see words like minimum and maximum, the first thing that comes to mind is using derivatives. But for that, we need to have theta as a function in terms of some variable so that we can differentiate it and find where theta reaches its minimum or maximum value. So let us create that function. We don't know the side length of this square, so let us label it as x. So all of them will also be equal to x as well. Now let this piece be of length c, and since this is x, thus this piece will be of length x minus c. Next, let us label this angle as alpha and this angle as beta. So look at this right triangle. What will be the value of tan of angle alpha? It will be the opposite side, or C, over the adjacent side, or X, right? Then consider this right triangle. What will be the value of tan of angle beta? It will be the opposite side, or X, minus C, over the adjacent side, or X, right? So it will be X over X minus C, over x, or 1 minus c over x. Great! Now, here comes the magic. Draw this height. What will be the value of this angle? Suppose we have two parallel lines, which is intersected by another line like this. Then we know that both these angles, which are also called alternate angles, will be equal to each other. So look here. This height and this vertical side of the square are parallel lines, and this side of the triangle acts as the intersecting line. Therefore, both these angles must be equal, and thus this angle is also equal to alpha. Similarly, if this is beta, then this angle will also be equal to beta. Voila! This means our angle theta is simply equal to alpha plus beta. Now let us simplify things a bit. Let c over x equals some variable t. Therefore, tan of alpha equals t, and tan of beta equals 1 minus t. Now take tan on both sides of this to get tan theta equals tan of alpha plus beta. We can use the formula for tan of alpha plus beta, which is tan of alpha plus tan of beta divided by 1 minus tan of alpha times tan of beta. So using this for alpha and beta, we get tan of theta equals t plus 1 minus t, divided by 1 minus t times 1 minus t. This will be cancelled, and we get 1 in the numerator. Now t times 1 minus t is t minus t squared. So the denominator becomes 1 minus t plus t squared. This way, we have found the function of theta in terms of a single variable t. Also note that c will be greater than or equal to 0, but it will be less than or equal to x. So, c over x, or t, is greater than 0 and less than 1. So now, all we need to do is find the minimum and maximum value of this expression, and finally take tan inverse of that to get the range of theta. If you look at the graph of the function 1 minus t plus t squared, it looks like this parabola. We can clearly see that from 0 to 1, this function is maximum at t equals 0 or t equals 1, where the value of this function is 1, and it has a minimum somewhere here, which we can find by differentiating this function with respect to t, which will be 2 times t minus 1, and set it to 0. This gives us t equals half, and the value of this thing will be 1 minus half plus half square, this will give 3 over 4, which is the minimum of this function. So, if we reverse this, 
then the minimum value of this function will be 1, and the maximum value of this function becomes 4 over 3. This means the tan of theta is between 1 and 4 over 3. Now taking tan inverse on both sides, we get that theta lies between tan inverse of 1 and tan inverse of 4 over 3, which means theta lies between tan inverse of 1 is 45 degrees and tan inverse of 4 over 3 is approximately 53.1 degrees, and that's it. This way, we found the full range of theta without ever needing the side length of the square. That was simply awesome! If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!